Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. What you need to know about Spectre and Meltdown and your iPhone. Plus, let's meet the Glitch Witch. <laughs> and how an app can make you more fabulous. Oh, it's time for iOS Today. Oh, iOS Today is brought to you by Quip. Make a fresh start this year with a Quip electric toothbrush. It cleans like a premium electric brush at a fraction of the cost. Visit getquip.com slash twit to get your first refill pack free when you purchase any Quip electric toothbrush. And by Tracker, a coin-sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit the tracker.com slash iOS today to save 20% off any order. Time, <laughs> oompa, oompa, oompa. <laughs> Time for iOS today. Hello, everybody. I'm Leo Laporte. I am Megan Maroney. And this is the show where we talk about iOS, which for our purposes is, of course, the iPhone, the iPad, but also the Apple Watch and the Apple TV. I can I have a gesture for every device because they're all on set with us today. Uh, today we're going to talk about security and privacy. Hey. And it was this, it was <laughs> as if I knew there was going to be some big security. You issue suggested this a week ago. Mm -hmm. And then what happens on Tuesday? We learn about Spectre and Meltdown. And, uh, but you know, it's almost a safe bet any week to say, mm -hmm. I know, let's really talk security and privacy. <laughs> we do it every Tuesday with Steve Gibson on security now, but I think it's also important that we talk about it on this show. Really, every show we do, because if you not everybody is so in, interested in security, it's almost so insecure that they listen to security now every week. But everybody has to deal with this. So, is it was it overblown? Was the news media overblown? Is it underblown? Where where do we lie? Like, I feel like I've heard both. It is both. So, it is the worst security flaw in history, only because it affects virtually everything. Uh, in fact, Apple was at great pains to say, "No, no, it doesn't affect the Apple Watch, but it does affect." Your iPhone, your iPad, your Apple TV, your PC, your Mac, uh, even your Chrome OS devices. Uh, th there's only a few devices, few processors uh, that are so uh, dumb that they don't do this thing that made them vulnerable called speculative execution. Uh, the, the folks at uh, the Raspberry Pi folks said, no, no, we don't have a problem. It's the slower, simpler processors, but it affects Intel processors, it affects AMD processors. It affects ARM processors made by Qualcomm and Samsung, even Apple. The good news is this might reaffirm why you use iOS. Because Apple to so tightly controls that ecosystem that they were able to put out patches even before we learned about it. iOS was patched. Uh, and, they, and then yesterday, Monday, uh, they put out additional patches for Safari. So Apple's been really, the, I think, the most successful in locking down their systems. So that's that's really good news. In fact, Windows, uh, Microsoft's even had problems. They they did get a patch out uh, as fast as Apple did, but then it turned out that people had third-party antiviruses on their systems, something you don't have to worry about on iOS. Uh, the, some of those third-party antiviruses caused crashes when you installed the update blue screens of death. And then today we learned that at Microsoft's actually stopped its updates because it turns out some AMD, AMD based computers, you know, there's Intel chips and there's chips made by another company called AMD that are functionally the same, but they're different enough that they, they were causing Windows machines to crash when the update was applied. So Microsoft's had a hard time. Android is having a very hard time because, as you know, most Android phones are running operating systems that are two generations behind and earlier, and they're, they're just not getting patched. Many operate, many, many Android handsets uh, manufacturers and many cell carriers just don't push patches. So really, if you wanted as an iOS user some confirmation that you're on the right track, this is it. So the, the idea was a lot of people knew about this. It, they knew about it first in this June is, and they've been working on patches. As it should be. So normally in the security community, the, the norm is that you find a, a hole. And it was interesting because this was found independently by two different groups. 
uh, they, and they're two different flaws, that they're similar flaws. And you would then notify the, the, the relevant companies, whether it's the operating system or the hardware manufacturers, and give them typically 90 days to fix it. After 90 days, the convention is, there's no law, there's no, but the convention is, after, give them 90 days. After 90 days, if they don't fix it, well, then it's prudent to let everyone know because hackers by then might have found it. And this is the real concern. And it's an interesting, I think it's very interesting because there is some sort of synchronicity in this stuff. It's very common that uh, security flaws will be found by independent teams at the same time. Uh, Brian Krebs on security uh, wrote about this. And I, I, his, his thesis, I think, is, is, is my thesis anyway. I think it's his thesis. He compared for some reason, he said, well, just like Newton and Leibniz came up with calculus at the same time. So I guess his thesis is it's in the air. I don't think it's that. I think it's security researchers find fertile areas to look at. And this area is a really, you have to be a super, I think, super genius to discover these flaws. Meltdown. They're, so they take advantage, Inspector, this is Apple's uh, uh, page on this subject. Uh, and Apple does a pretty good job of describing it. Let me see if I can make it very simple. Modern processors speed themselves up, and then Intel started doing this in 1995 by guessing ahead. By it's called speculative execution. They guess what's going to happen next. That, combined with the fact that modern processors to speed themselves up also keep data in a ver a memory that's on the chip, very fast memory called L1 cache. So they have. So these two things combine to, to leak information about what's going on. So they're, the processor's lo like looking ahead saying, well, I think, I think Megan's going to take a left turn here. So just in case, let's get all the data associated with that left turn in the cache. And that usually speeds things up because more often than not, Megan does take a left turn. They're very good at predicting what's going to happen. So they're ready. Oh, yeah, we knew you were going to do that. So we have everything and it's faster. Occasionally, Megan will take a right turn and they have to go, oh. But here's the problem. Multiple processes are going on in a processor. And other processes can, and this is the flaw, look at what's stored in that fast memory, that L1 cache, and, and comb through it looking for maybe maybe the left turn Megan was going to take was to log in to her computer. Well, they can say, oh, the look, the login, the password information is now in that L1 cache. And another process unrelated can steal it. So this is a problem if you have malware on your system. That would be the rogue process that's, that's peeking at your memory there and going, ah. Or, and this is a much bigger problem, if you're running on a shared computer system and you say, well, I don't share my computer system. But websites often do. Usually when you get a website, you're not the only person on that server. There are many, many people on that server. Same thing with Amazon Web Services where they have you know, lots of people using the same computer Google has a similar system. Uh, so does Microsoft with Azure. That's where it's really problematic because the bad guy could be one of the people using that processor and he could just sit there continually looking at what's in the L1 cache saying, oh, is there anything in there? Is there a password in there? Is there anything in there? This is why, though, it's difficult. Uh, you don't know what you're getting and it's kind of random what you're getting. You're just getting a chunk of memory and you have to kind of figure out, well, is this useful? And I think it's why... As far as we know, and I have to add that little weasel words, as far as we know, there's nobody using this trick yet. It's a hard thing to exploit. And the only reason I say as far as we know is it's also possible. Here, here's an example of it. You see, on the right, that's the you know English language version of what's on the left, the memory dump. And you can look through that. In fact, that's what the researchers did. And they said, whoa, there's my password. There's my login. There's the text I'm writing. All of it's there. So there, that was a dump of the L1 cache. So they're running this Meltdown. Meltdown Inspector used two different techniques, and they affect computers uh, differently, but the same kind of general idea. And the reason I think this came up is because we there was a similar uh, attack called Rowhammer that affected Android devices maybe six months, a year ago. And so I think securities were looking at, security researchers were looking at these things. Uh, but what we don't know is, did the NSA kind of be looking at this too? And maybe they had, you know, they're smart. They, they, or, or, you know, the, the Russian FSB or, or whoever, maybe one of the three-letter spy agencies 
with its very, very smart hackers, had also synchronicity, remember, said, oh, yeah, we should we should pursue this avenue and see. And maybe they had independently discovered it and maybe they were using it. It works better, as I said, in a shared environment or in a targeted environment. If I wanted to get Megan, it'd be a lot easier because what's in that memory dump, I kind of have some ideas about what I'm looking for, right? Uh, if it's just kind of I send it out to a million people, I'm going to get so much data back and I'm not going to know really what I'm looking for. It's going to be a little bit more tricky to sift through all those needles in the haystack. But but if I'm targeting somebody, like let's say Sony Pictures Entertainment, let's say I wanted to get into their systems, I'd send them, as we know, this is what happens, a spear phishing attack, an email that says, uh, this is uh, from Amy Pascal, the chief of Sony, and you better open this spreadsheet right now and get to work on it. And the, and, you, and you go, oh my gosh, the boss just says I, and you open it up and if something goes wrong, it doesn't quite work, but meanwhile, You've installed that malware that is now going to sit on your system and run this specter or meltdown attack all the time and look through your memory. And since we know who's it's on somebody's computer that we know, here's Randall. This looks like Randall Schwartz's computer. Uh, since <laughs> see how that's see how that secret password. So that's a little bit more of a problem. And so Apple just yesterday fixed Safari as well. So that's the good news. And because we're using iOS devices, there's nothing, literally, there's nothing to worry about. You're getting those patches pushed, unless for some reason you're not updating. And really, this is the TLDR. Too long, didn't read, didn't listen. We should do a TLDL. Too long, <laughs> didn't listen. Update. And that is what scares me because, especially in light of all the battery stuff that's been going on um, with updates, I have uh, my, my focus group, otherwise known as my book group. They are uh, not updating. No, they're not. Because, well, one, uh, one of my book group just switched to a pixel, which is just such a pain because then I have to restart their iMessage group. <laughs> and uh, my bubbles are green. Use and group I, me or something. Use something that's cross-platform. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. we were all iPhone users. Yeah. But then she said, you know, I, I got a pixel. I'm sick of it. I updated it. It killed my phone. And then, you know, someone else saying, oh, I updated it. It killed my phone. I updated it. It killed my phone. Don't update. Don't update. Don't update. And I just want to update. Like, I, I need to know what they what they well, mean killing their phone. Like, I think it's probably just any manner of things, but it's this. It's gotten unusably slow. Yeah. But I mean, also you're hearing in the background, oh, like when I update, it slows down my phone because I have an older phone. So and then so you think you're slowed down even yeah. if maybe you're not. So I think that's part of this is part of a bigger problem as well. I mean, basically what you're saying, yeah, update and easy, difficult to exploit is different than safe. Like we're Yeah, it's, but okay, but that's a good point. Probably the members of your book group shouldn't. What they should do is take advantage of the twenty nine dollar battery fix right. and and get Apple to put new batteries uh, on pretty much no questions asked in their phones and then update. You, you, the advice is update, always update. But I should point out this particular flaw anyway is so hard to, mm -hmm. so hard to execute, and so kind of random in what it gets that I'm not. It's not hugely concerning to me yet. It doesn't. What it doesn't do. There, there's another category of security flaws that are much more scary that let people take over your computer, turn on the camera turn on the microphone, all sorts of things. This doesn't, this does not allow that. This is merely peeking at information. Now they could use it if what they got was, you know, a password to your bank. I mean, maybe they could use that information, but it, it's really a it's more difficult, very much more difficult to execute. I don't think anybody's really done it yet. Mm -hmm. And what it gets is, is a different kind of category of information. This is all, I understand this is all really hard to kind of wrap your head around and, and everybody's looking for the bottom line. So let me give you the bottom line again. In general, anytime you have updates, many of those updates, some of them are for bug fixes and performance improvements and cosmetic fixes, of course. But in general, almost every update hides at least one or two important security patches. And you really cannot ignore those because it's an announcement in effect to bad guys there's a flaw here and the bad guys are, oh believe me, looking very carefully at every security update, saying and this is why, by the way, Apple is very cagey when they do a security update and you click the link. Well, what, what is getting fixed? They don't really tell you because they don't want to give bad guys any additional information. Mm -hmm. But bad guys do work on it. And they go, oh, I see what it's fixing here. Let's see if there's a way to exploit that. And so it's, an, it's basically announcing there's a problem. It's that end of that 90-day period. There's a problem. 
And every and by the way, the people who discovered Meltdown Inspector have given out code that shows how to exploit it. That you know that's part of the announcement. Ninety day later announcement is here's how you do it because they have to prove it's doable. So a, a sufficiently motivated and 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 skilled bad guy could take advantage of it. Uh, whether they will is another matter. Um, it's one of those things where it, because it affects everything, it's probably worth somebody's time to work on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that one of the most interesting intakes, uh, insights on this that I heard was yesterday on Twitter with Amy Webb, who I am a big fan of. She is so great. And, you oh, know, I think a lot of us her. are saying like, well, I don't really understand this. What's wrong with me? And she basically said, we don't understand this. And that's the problem as software becomes more and more complicated. Uh, the security and privacy impetus is really on the creators of this software and the hardware. And we need to stay vigilant, keep paying attention because it's more intertwined in our lives. And it is getting more and more complicated. And even, you know, if you think about like the Melissa virus or something, that was so easy to understand what yeah. was going on. Don't open attachments. Yeah, right? that was all that you had years. to say was don't open an yeah. attachment. And we could understand how it traveled around. It could be easily explained. But this is so much more complicated. And I think that's part of why it's so difficult. Amy's suggestion, which I thought was really, really a good idea, was to treat it like public a public health crisis. Mm -hmm. And so for, you know, the flu uh, or Ebola, we have the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, the CDC. It's a federally funded agency that does two very important things. It does, of course, the thing that's being done right now, which is, put out information to physicians and hospitals and, and you know, the, the high-end technical information. But CDC is really good at public relations as well, at getting the word out to normal people what to do about this, what the cause for concerns are, uh, should you be concerned. She says, you know, we have something called U.S. CERT, the Computer Emergency Response Team, it's part of the Department of Homeland Security, that is essentially CDC for computer issues, security issues. But what they don't do as well is the PR side of it. And she encouraged them, and I think she's right, to uh, Im improve CERT's ability to reach out to normal people and give them useful advice about what to do. I said, well, it's really up to us journalists, particularly tech journalists, to not be sensational as many of the mainstream journalists were. I mean, if you watch the Today Show this week, you might have thrown your Macintosh away. I mean, <laughs> they were really... Don't, don't overblow it, but it's up to journalists particularly tech journalists, to take the time to really learn the story, to really understand it, and then translate it to people. That's what we're doing today. I think this is the job. There's another part that I think Amy came close to, but we really didn't talk about. It is a public health crisis, so you need something like the CDC. You need U.S. CERT to have a good PR thing. But as in any public health crisis, we also need us, individuals, to contribute to create herd immunities by making sure that the people in your book group update, right? Mm -hmm. That that the word goes forth, not just from techies, but from everybody, as it, as if, if there were a, a, a measles epidemic, parents would get together and would say, okay, well, let's fix this. Let's, let's quarantine kids. And that's what we need to do. So I think there is a problem in that people say, well, it's so technical. I don't understand it. I don't know what to do about it. I'm just going to ignore it or it's more important to me that my 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 phone not slow down. I'm not going to update. So we need to we need to really put out the word. It's a, it is kind of a computer health crisis and it's only by the way, I sad to say only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get easier. So get 11.2.2 on iOS. That's the most updated. Um I uh we had a conversation yesterday about the public beta cuz I'm running the public beta on the iPad and you assume that's also updated. Yeah. Uh, this sometimes happens that there's a disconnect because they're in different channels of development. But generally, uh, everything in the public beta should have everything that the pre, you know, all the patches the previous versions had plus mm -hmm. as opposed. But occasionally it will be they get out of sync in your public beta. I've seen this happen actually fairly recently on Windows where the fix that came out to the public wasn't yet in the new version uh, for the Insiders program. But generally, and I, I, I trust Apple to do this right. Uh, all it takes is a guy going down the hall <laughs> saying, hey, make sure that this patch that we just put out is also in your public beta. And I'm sure Apple does that. And so what about our Apple TV? Was that automatically updated? There was a there was a TV OS and it's Auto automatically, automatically updated. Automatically. There was a so TV OS. Anything. The, only, the only Apple device that you don't have to worry about, Apple is at great pains to say, is your Apple Watch. It does, it's too stupid. 
It doesn't do speculative <laughs> execution, so it's not vulnerable. Stupid dumb Apple Watch. I love Sometimes you. Sometimes a stupid processor is a good idea. There's one other thing we should address, and this was uh, widely uh, reported last week when we first learned about Spectre and Meltdown. The fixes would slow your machine down. And according to the register, they said it's going to slow your machine down 5 to 30% hugely. Don't freak out yet. <laughs> uh, the initial fixes will, but as Apple has mentioned, this is uh, Apple, if this is from iMore, but Apple said, we tested, for instance, our patch for Safari, and it was like a 1% to 2% slowdown. The, the initial patches, the quick fixes, are going to be worse because they're going to turn off speculative execution or they're going to prevent certain kinds of memory access that will slow down your system. Right, you could fix it very quickly. Just turn off L1 cache, for instance, or stop doing speculative execution. But that would have such a hit on performance that you'd go, "Why?" It'd be like your iPhone friends. Why is my machine so slow? I'm not going to do that patch. The long-term fixes, and Intel and AMD and the ARM folks, ARM Holdings, are all working on microcode fixes that probably won't have much impact. Apple's tested its fix for Safari, the one that they pushed out yesterday, and says just a small impact. Anything, by the way, you should also probably know this. We've we've said this for years uh, as people who test computers. Anything less than a five percent slowdown, you won't notice. Five percent is kind of the the turn the switch for where you would see something, and you'd have to really be paying attention for a five percent difference. One percent difference, you're not gonna you're not gonna mm -hmm. notice that. So. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a case where even if it does slow you down a little bit, the patch is worth doing. It's not going to be a big slowdown, and I'm not. I'm uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be all right. Now, if you want to know more, if you're like really, I have to know all the inside details. We will be covering that on Security Now today, right after a Mac Break Weekly. Steve has said this is the show is going to be Meltdown Inspector, so you'll get a deep understanding. Steve talked about it last week, but we didn't realize how you know problematic this was going to be. There'll be a entire show on it on security now the the uh, current edition of security now for this week so some basic security tips um that you know just a little ch check up uh in your face id or touch id and password section there's some things that i recommend if you want to take a look at my um iphone now um i will show it's okay you. to show your security <laughs> um I, I, face ID is a nice security It is. Stash, and yeah. so there's certain apps that work with face ID. These are the ones that I have working. So you can set that. It's, uh, you know, it's it's definitely easier. And I think the more, sometimes the more simple your security is, the easier it is to use, the more likely you are to use it. I don't use require attention for face ID. We've talked about that before, but that's something that can increase your security if you're worried that someone might I turned mine you. off too, because yeah. then it makes it more... Uh, it works better, but it does raise the issue of somebody could, like, right. your your sons could kind of say, Yeah, if you're worried about that. Mom, what's that over there? And then <laughs> <laughs> um, passcode option. So there, you have these different options. You can do a custom alphanumeric code. That's the most secure, right? Yes. Um, it's, except if you forget it, I guess. Even if you forget it. <laughs> um, it's definitely more secure if you forget it than no one can get in your phone. And what I noticed in a recent update, I may, uh, may maybe uh, I'm speaking about a friend, of course, not me. I may have had a pretty simple passcode because yeah. I don't worry about people just picking up my iPhone and guessing my password, but they don't let me do that. I've used it for years and they've upped that. So like they haven't let me, you know, there's that's too easy. You can't do that. You know, that's a bad idea, by the way in my opinion, doing that because it, so passcode, in other words, what Apple did to you, not what you're doing to Apple. Mm -hmm. Passcodes are just, this is all you really need to understand about passwords and passcodes. Longer and more random is better. It's also hard to remember, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason is if you use dictionary words, hackers have search, you know, very fast dictionary word searches that they they have, believe me, the, the bad guys are really good at guessing passwords. I mean, better than you'd even imagine. And because computers can work so fast, often they can quickly get in. That's one of the reasons, by the way, Apple has the erase it after 10 bad tries. That's a good thing. Apple slows down in the number of times, the speed with which you can enter it. All of that is to defeat kind of brute force. We call it brute, brute force when it does it really fast and just kind of bangs on the thing. So you can't brute force a phone. Nevertheless, longer is better and randomer is better so when apple tells you oh you can't use one 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 that's too easy to guess the problem with that 
is they're reducing the set of potential passcodes, which makes it easier for an attacker. Mm. Now, on the other hand, Apple will say, yes, but attackers, the first thing they try is one, 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 and one, two, three, four, five, six, and you know, the obvious ones. So yeah, maybe that's the case. But I don't like, I really don't like it when constraints are put on what you could use as a password because that inevitably s shrinks the pool of possible passwords, which makes it theoretically easier to brute force. You have to balance that with what, what things pa hackers use right away. On your phone, it probably does make sense because, well, first of all, Apple no longer allows a four-digit passcode. They right? do. You can do a four-digit? Yeah, they do. Here are your, let's see. Um, okay, so don't do a four-digit passcode. Okay, hold on, don't show. Because a four-digit passcode has, if you think about it, a yes. total of nine nine. 1,999 possibilities. Actually, if you include 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10,000 possibilities, right. that's a pretty small set compared to a six-digit passcode, which has 100,000 mm -hmm. possibilities. Now, or it's the not, alphanumeric. Or alphanumeric, which has many, many times more. So again, the larger this possible set of passwords, the harder it is for somebody to guess it by going through all of them. You're kind of protected on the iPhone because you have to, on the iPhone, uh, uh, do it by hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although I think there's, I think the NSA has a, has a tool to, to do. Yeah. And this is a very important thing to turn on. And I, and, and unless you're the kind of person that always forgets your passcode and has to keep trying, turn on the erase phone after 10 tries. And if that worries you, go home and bat, make an encrypted backup of your phone. So even after it's erased, you can restore it. But that keeps anybody from guessing, right? Mm -hmm. Because 10 Unless bad guesses. they're really good at guessing. They'd have to be very good. Yeah, so take a look at my phone. The, 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 you can still do the four you can digit do the four. numeric. It's probably, but like, uh, probably uh, right. one, 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 one. Isn't a good um, idea. So this password can be easily guessed. Your right. passcode will. So, oh, I guess you can do it. Use it anyway. Hmm. Now that's you guys that's know the right my thing password. for Apple to do. Um, yeah, Which that's is warn you but not prevent it. Yeah, maybe it was on the i had that it didn't let me so maybe that's in a public beta well you'll see that all the time you know you have to include certain mm -hmm. things or you can't do certain things let me change my password. so it is so i think even frankly a four-digit passcode is better than certainly better than nothing and probably adequate because again there's ten thousand possibilities mm -hmm. and you only get 10 guesses as long as you're using something that's fairly random um, but but people might know your birth date right so don't mm -hmm. do you know 11 62 uh People might know, what else would you use? Maybe the last four of your social, that's probably not a good one to use. The last four of your phone number, probably not a good one to use. Um, I use, shouldn't tell anybody. No, this. you should. <laughs> well, commonly guessed patterns are also really. Um, I easy. like to use zip codes. Oh, what's your zip code? Problem is zip codes is only five, right? Yeah. So, um, but but a zip, so not your current zip code, because uh, that, that would be knowable. Just maybe when you where you grew up. I'm a big like, fan of childhood phone numbers and childhood zip codes, uh, because those are things you probably had in burned in your memory. Mm -hmm. But it's very unlikely that a, a, an attacker would be able to figure out your childhood phone number. I mean, they might, but. I mean, if they, yeah. They'd have to be really going after mm -hmm. you. They'd have to do a lot of research. Some other things you can protect if you're suspicious about the people around you is allowing access when locked. This is, um, I allow access when locked to all these things, but you might yeah. not want people to be able to you have Siri. Siri, like, oh, who Siri, owns this Siri, iPhone? what's Leo's phone number, yeah. you know? Um, see who's calling you. People can reply to messages when my phone is locked. They can this voice This underscores dial. the fundamental tension, the balance between convenience and security. In general, more security, less convenient. Less secure, more convenient. And mm -hmm. so that's what those switches are. They're the convenience switches. And just understand, when you turn up convenience, you turn down security. And that's really, I think it's up to you. As long as you understand, really what we're trying to do today is help you understand the trade-offs so that you can make the, you know, the choice that fits your needs. And there's a truism, and it's kind of scary, most of us are not targets. So we're kind of generally safe because many attacks require a lot of it. Like figuring out your childhood phone number requires a lot of work and research. If you're a target, if you're a celebrity, a politician, 
if you have your thumb on the nuclear button, it is likely that there are people trying to figure out in every way possible how to attack you. And it's generally accepted by security experts that if a determined hacker or team of hackers wants to get you, they can. Mm -hmm. So targets, it's very difficult to protect yourself. The rest of us, you're probably okay with, with just kind of mild security. But with phishing attacks, I mean, like Amy Pascal might be in my book group. You don't know if she is. She isn't, but um, that was the example you used from yeah, Sony. Yeah, the, the Sony yeah. former who she lost her job. Yeah. Although, you know, there's, I'm going out of my lane. Okay. Mind. That's okay. There, there's, a, there's a little bit of comeuppance because I was, what was the movie I just saw? It was a wonderful movie. Um, oh, shoot. It was, uh, oh, theater? Molly's Game. Mm, I haven't even heard of that. Amy Pascal. Oh. Because she produced it, because she, when she was fired at Sony, she had certain things already in development that she was able to take with her, including one of the best pictures of the year. Oh. So there's a little bit of a, some come up. It's, by the way, have you seen it yet? No, it's good. <gasps> so good. Okay, good to know. So good. Aaron Sorkin wrote and directed his first his directorial debut, I believe. Really? Yeah. And uh, it is Aaron at his finest. And Aaron Sorkin is hit and miss. You know, he does some bad stuff too, but this is so good. Good, okay. So speaking of the trade-off between, you know, security and we're talking about last pass last pass yes. oh, i love um, last pass security God and bless ease. you i love it too but there are times when it's just like i have to log in there again and i have to log in there again and i have to log in there again i'm just going to make up a password instead of having it yeah so, so a password manager is best the whole idea of a password manager is you remember one password which is the the key to your vault and everything else is in your vault. So you can make it unmemorable. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the best thing to do is to use the password manager to generate a long, strong, truly random password, unmemorable random password. Uh, let it do it. And make sure, very important, you have a unique one for each service and account. And then all you have to do is remember the one password that unlocks one password or last pass. Those are the two most popular. It unlocks the vault, and then it will paste in that weird long password. I think that's a great system, but there are potential flaws. A, uh, it is it is a little inconvenient, so you may be tempted, as I am on some accounts where I don't care if somebody gets my New York Times account. I use the same password over and over again. I do do that. I admit it, and many people do. But what is the harm of somebody hacking my New York Times account, right? Not, not the end of the world. Well, your credit card's attached to it, isn't it? No. Well, that's okay. So it would be very important not to let somebody hack your Amazon account, any account where they could buy stuff. Uh, yeah, then you, so I use a, and in fact, in, in Amazon's a good example. Not only do I use a good random generated password stored in LastPass, but I also use two factor. I turn on two factor so that in order to get into my Amazon account, I use, we should talk, we'll talk about that in a second, what two factor is and how to use it. So you really want to secure those accounts. But I think that we all have accounts. Who cares? If somebody gets your Tinder account, you know? <laughs> that seems like a really bad one to Actually, get. that might be a bad one, huh? What is it? I mean, like, I guess, yeah, something so It's a dating app that people use. Young no, people. I know what Tinder is. <laughs> You're just setting that up for later. So, oh, someone must have gotten my, t uh, signed me up for a Tinder account. <laughs> it's, a, it's, 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 it's a pre-defense, we call yeah. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I get it. But that's, I might, I have a, that's a serious question about New York Times. Like, you have a subscription, so they have your credit card. You can... Like, could someone... No, they can't get your credit card by okay. logging into your account. Okay. Any any well-set-up service, even Amazon, they can't get your credit card. But they card, could buy and order But they things. could buy stuff. I don't yeah. think... I, I'll have to check. I so don't, someone could order a subscription to the New York Times they off could, of your... <laughs> What they could do that would be the most uh, annoying would be move yeah. your subscription to some other address. Yeah. But you would catch on to that, and you make a phone call to the subscription department, and then you get it back. It's not... In other words... Again, security convenience, you have mm -hmm. to decide. But the best ideal would be always to use a password generator. And they make it pretty convenient. I But the other problem with password vaults is it's a single point of failure. If somebody gets your vault, they get everything, mm -hmm. right? So, you, A, you have to have a very strong password on your vault. And you probably should secure it with more than just a password. And a good password manager will let you secure it in all sorts of interesting ways. We could talk about that when we talk about two-factor. But... Number one, tell your book group. We'll use your book group as the example. Okay. <laughs> Number one, when you go to your book group, tell them, please, get one password, 
get last pass. Those are the two best. One of the other, one of the other, and start using it religiously. That is a huge boon. Makes it very, very hard for hackers. Almost always when you hear about people getting hacked, when you hear about uh, Sarah Palin getting hacked, it's because she, of things like secret questions. She used her high school as the answer to a secret question. Paris Hilton got hacked. She used the name of her dog. Secret questions are the worst. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me, uh, can I briefly address this one? This is not the app you're looking for. This is not your, I don't know what this is, one password only. But don't use it. Yeah. Um, and In fact, if you're a bad guy, the best thing you could do is come up with something like this. Well, that's why I'm I'm surprised that Apple would allow this in their app I'm store. Not. All sorts one of password stuff. only, like because when you search for one password, that's what that's what I got, and I was like, that is not no. one password; it's the number one. Apple search is so abysmally bad; it drives um, me crazy. So I don't know why this is still there. It seems like it should be removed for the things they remove and don't approve. I'm very surprised because this is clearly no, just, a spoof. There's just too many. Yeah, I'm so sorry to say. this Too is many apps being uh, submitted that they can't. So one Don't password use that only one. by iApp in Android. And if I were a bad person, I would make something called one password only. Yeah. And collect everybody's passwords. Or last passes. Last passes. Yeah. <laughs> Next to last passes. <laughs> uh, so last pass, uh, lastpass.com, and one password, the number one P A S S W. Actually, now they have an O in it W O R D. Uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, those are very good. Now, they're not free, but they're not expensive. No, $2 a month for LastPass. We have the corporate account here, which I found interesting. I tried to transfer all my LastPass corporate account stuff to OnePass, and you didn't let me, or Russell didn't let me. Um, it said your organization doesn't allow you, so that's good security. Yeah, we use LastPass Enterprise uh, for the same reason. Now, there's one more. So since that's a vulnerability you want to really lock it down you want to have a good password don't make monkey one two three your last pass or your one password vault password your vault password should be remember it's the only one you're going to memorize so make it make it 16 or more letters uh, make it complicated make it long one way you can make your passwords longer is to have a password that's good and then add like your childhood phone number to it or your zip code to it. Mm -hmm. That's at, that's making it longer. That's padding it with something you can easily remember. But it makes it much harder for a bad guy to figure out what that is. The other thing you can do, is it time to talk about two-factor? Yes, let's talk about two-factor. There's a turn on two-factor. And uh, if, if nothing else, at least use two-factor on your password vault. If you don't use it in your password vault, you have given a bad guy a gift. Because the password vault, again, has every, everything in it. And by the way, I use LastPass not just for passwords but to store my passport images, my driver's license, other stuff, my social security numbers for the whole family, other stuff that you want to keep uh, secret. So do not use the LastPass Authenticator app, by oh, the way. Why not? <laughs> because that's a, still a single point of failure. Oh. So let's talk about, <laughs> and, and they had a security flaw in it. <laughs> so let's talk about what two-factor is. So... All of this stuff comes down to some, a simple idea, which is authentication. How do you prove you are you? How do you prove, you know, to Amazon that it's me, not somebody stealing my account? Authentication is what we call this. And fairly primitive authentication is login and password. That's been around forever. Although it is relatively new, you know, in... in when I was a kid, we didn't have logins and passwords to anything. It's only been since computers came along. The worst, you know, the most you'd have to remember is your locker key combination, right? But same thing, by the way, same idea. You have a padlock on your locker. Nobody can open your locker unless they can authenticate by knowing something only you know. So that's one factor, something you know, whether it's a password or a combination. But there are other ways you can identify yourself. There's actually, we think of three different ways you can identify yourself. Something you know, something you have, and in my case, the something I have is uh, is a security dongle. This is called a YubiKey, but you may have seen uh, credit card sized devices that generate numbers. Your phone is something you have as opposed to something you know, right? And then the third form of identification is something you are, your face, in the case of Face ID, your fingerprint, in the case of Touch ID, bio, biometrics are typically 
used for something you are, okay? Something you know, something you have, something you are. We generally, you know, use one of the three. But if you use two of the three, two-factor authentication, it would be more than twice as hard to steal your account. So that's why I really love the idea of using Face ID, for instance, mm -hmm. to secure LastPass. So in order for a bad guy to steal your vault, he'd have to know your password and steal your face. That is more than twice as hard. Mm -hmm. Very hard to steal anyone's face these days. Well, there are, and, and we've seen, you know, there are theoretical ways to take a picture, create a 3D image and all of this, but that's a lot of work and you need the password, mm -hmm. right? So something you, so we, we, we often want to com combine a password, something you know, with either something you have or something you are. Something you have is your phone. And this is the easiest and probably most effective way to do it. You've, my bank, for instance, will text a number to my phone. And in addition to logging into my bank, I'll have to have that, num that six-digit number to log into my bank. That isn't perfect and, in fact, is not recommended now mm. by security experts because it's unfortunately pretty easy to steal somebody's phone number. Mm -hmm. Not their phone, but their phone number. You can call the phone company and... And, and socially engineer them, say, oh, I lost my phone, I mean, him card. Get your phone number, duplicate it, and then they'll get that second factor text. Also, so, if you're using, what I find sometimes... Everything security, lights up. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm using my computer, <laughs> and then it's two-factor, and then the text just comes in on yeah. message on my on computer. Everything. And yeah. then it's like, okay, well, that, well, that wasn't two-factor. Like, if someone had my computer, they right. would be able to... So it's best to use an authenticator app. But you don't recommend the LastPass authenticator app. Well, not if you're using LastPass, okay. because then it's one play, one point. You don't want a single point of failure. The whole point of two factor is have two kind of disparate points of failure. I actually use one that I do recommend called Authy, A U T H Y. And do you recommend that over Google Authenticator? Google Authenticator is great. The drawback, and I think that lately they've added ways around this, but the drawback to Google Authenticator is that if you get a new phone, you have to go back and reset everything up, which is a real pain in the butt, right? Authy trades a little convenience for security. Mm. Authy um, is just like Google Authenticator, except that you can store your authentication information on the Authy servers. So when you get a new, and I, it, for me, this is important because I'm always using new phones. I can reinstall Authy on a phone and download all my authentications. So I don't have to go back and reset up everything. It's just downloaded. Now, the good news is Authy does protect these very well. If they're fully encrypted with a password only you know. So I encrypt my... And by the way, you can store that in LastPass. I can encrypt my Authy. And then they secondarily verify it by sending you, making you send a text message. So you can't get your Authy moved to another phone without jumping through some hoops. But once, but it's really still the. So I'm a big fan of Authy. A U T H Y. It's free, as with all authenticator apps. And you can show this. It's okay. It creates a, a second factor number. Now here's the key on this number. You see, it's changing. Every 30 seconds, it's regenerated. So let me tell you. I don't know if you care about this. Maybe I'm giving you too much information. If I am, put your fingers in your ears for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> it the way it does this is you have a secret number that is yours and yours alone. And it takes that secret number and mushes it together with the current time of day to generate a six-digit number, which changes every 30 seconds because the time of day changes. So that number is always unique, except that if you somehow got your secret number got given away, then people could figure out what your six-digit code was. So it's a good idea uh, to really hold on to that secret number. That's what Authy is, by the way, storing in its database. And you can see, actually, I have a lot of accounts on Authy. You should use two-factor, whether it's a fingerprint, a face ID, uh, a authenticator app like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, or Authy, for every account that lets you, especially your bank, especially Amazon. Uh, I use it for Twitter. I use it for Microsoft. I use it for Snapchat. I use it for my mail. It is absolutely, I use it, of course, for Google. It is absolutely important that you do this. Now, you say, but Leo, you're showing your authenticator numbers. 
Well, I am. This is a little security breach. You probably wouldn't recommend this, but in, <laughs> in order to use this, you have four seconds. You have yeah. You'd have to f know what my Google password was, and in in the four seconds that you you know the thirty seconds this number is good, <laughs> use it. That's one of the reasons this is great because it changes every thirty seconds. So even if somebody sees it over your shoulder, it's only good for a limited period of time, and they can't get your secret number from seeing the six digit number. It's a one way smoosh. You can't unsmoosh. So this is a I I really. I feel much, and by the way, I am a target, not a massive target. I'm no Paris Hilton. But every time you say like, oh, it's fine, you know, like. Every I, time I say, say I'm secure, yeah, that's, that's a little invitation. tease to somebody, some nitwit out there <laughs> to say, oh, well, let's see how secure Leo is. So, yeah. and I, I, I would say that somebody tries to hack into my servers uh, every, about every half hour. So. Anybody who's running a server is getting that, but you know, you're all, we're all targets to a greater or less degree. If you're talking about security on a podcast, you're probably a little bit more of a talk target. Mm -hmm. So I, but I, and I have never been hacked. That's another dumb thing to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, and, and I believe a lot of that is because I have two factor. In fact, I've come close to being hacked a number of times, um, but because I have two factor on, I wasn't. So two-factor is that extra, it's like a moat and a portcullis. It's the, ex <laughs> if, if you don't mind a little midi me going all <laughs> medieval on you, it's just one extra way of protecting yourself. And don't it forget makes, the portcullis. <laughs> it makes a big difference. Yeah, don't just have a portcullis. Have a moat. <laughs> um, wow. That, uh, another, way, another good way you can protect yourself is by brushing your teeth. Oh, gosh, this is so exciting. <laughs> this is a segue to our sponsor. New sponsor. So I you've, love we've, the Quip. The Quip is so great, isn't it? Let's so stop. first of all, I had a great checkup this week. Oh, my dentist said, what are you doing? And then <gasps> my dentist always says, are you using a electric toothbrush? And I say yes. Invariably. And the other one is floss. The Quip. Look, this is my monthly Quip. My monthly Quip supply. Quip is... Uh, uh, electric toothbrush by mail. You know that you're supposed to brush two minutes twice a day, right? Mm -hmm. I do, but do you? Well, the Quip QUIP electric toothbrush is beautiful. I mean, this is Apple quality design. And it cleans just like the high-end toothbrushes without the high-end price. Plus, and this is important for a lot of people, uh, they don't change their toothbrush head mm -hmm. regularly. So with Quip, you get every, you get, see that? Two weeks. That's a two week supply. You get, there's a three month supply. You get toothpaste and you will automatically get new heads sent to you so that uh, the toothpaste, by the way, is great. In fact, let me, let me just open up. My, why don't you brush your teeth for us? I mean, why I will. Not? You know, you can't brush your teeth too often. No. Do you have it? It also sticks to your mirror. Do you have it stuck to your mirror? <laughs> No, I, 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 I didn't know that. Yes, and I'm a little embarrassed to say that sometimes I forget to brush my teeth. So this I, reminds at, you. At least once a day. I know that's gross, but you guys were friends. So um, it's, it's nice right to have there it in, in your front counter. of the mirror. So yeah. I can see it. Yeah, it doesn't get gross with all the other yeah. stuff on your counter. Mine's rose gold. What color is that one? Uh, looks it's like, like it's space just gray. Space gray. Yeah, it's very <laughs> masculine. Um, okay, so this, it. let me untape this just to show you. You could also, you don't have to just stick it to your mirror. You could stick it to your iPad, right? You could, sure. <laughs> it might get in the way a little bit. <laughs> so how do you do this? Because I, uh, I didn't... They peel off the back. Um, here, this thing. You peel this oh, thing off. oh, this is so cool. I didn't yeah. know you could do that. And then you... Dummy? I'm a, I'm a mirror. dummy. Look yeah. at that. And the case so sticks to your So that's the holder, mirror. not the brush. Yeah, the holder sticks to your But mirror. see, you put it right here yeah, on your put it iPad. Yeah, right there on your iPad. And then you'll never forget to brush. <laughs> yeah. By the way, it doubles as a pencil holder if you yeah. really... Actually, if you really uh, now, this is the toothbrush, and this this is the electric toothbrush, just as good as those really expensive electric toothbrushes. I love the the heads, and you get a new head automatically by mail. You get new toothbrush. You're supposed to refresh your bristles mm. every three months. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Visit the dentist every six months. Refresh your bristles every three months. <laughs> so the Quip puts all of this kind of on autopilot. Ten thousand <laughs> dental professionals. Optional subscription plan. You don't have to do it, but I would recommend it. Give you a new brush head every three months for just $5, including shipping, free worldwide. 
I actually like the quick quip toothpaste too. I'm a kind of a quip toothpaste fan. I like fan. it too. And they give you instructions like you only need a little tiny dollop. I yes. had no idea. I was doing the strip. You don't need the strip. Isn't that funny? Because well, some of those other people, like you'll see the ads where they go because mm -hmm. they the more toothpaste you use, the more money they make. Mm -hmm. Quip doesn't care that if you use the dollop. In fact, that's the right way to do it. And then you can br should I brush my teeth? Sure. Like it times you right, so you get that's like, really important. It makes you turn. You do the front. It's very soft and gentle. Like I have an it's electric also, toothbrush before, but it was yeah. it's too rough. My like, electric toothbrush doesn't have this flexible head. Mm -hmm. I just think the it, all in all, this is really a, a well designed, well thought out. So twenty five dollars, okay. And, and right now, when you go to getquip.com slash twit, you get your first refill pack free. Let me just start, okay. oh, just start brushing while I'm talking I will also tell you that while you're brushing your teeth. It times you so you know. Like you do quadrant one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's it's seconds. quiet. It's not loud. You it don't hear that? Well, I mean, yeah, but it's not like a, a backhoe uh, You don't anything. hear gears grinding. I love the subscription idea because if you're in charge of buying like the toothbrush and the toothbrush heads mm -hmm. and everything for your family, it gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I everything that I can turn into a subscription, I will turn into a subscription. See, so did then you I hear that pause? That was a oh, I'm sorry, I'll stop talking. I'm just listen to Partner. the sweet sound. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Pea-sized blob of paste. Press the Q logo, right, to start the sensitive vibrations. Gently brush one tooth at a time, focusing the bristles around the gum line. It really feels good. While oh, did brushing. you remember to scrub your tongue? Yes. Brush your tongue, rinse your quip, and drop it back in its cover. Watch. Look at this. Ready? Right in here. Whoop. And that's on the mirror. Don't you love that? I do. That is awesome. Or iPad. <laughs> it's perfect on it's your perfect iPad. It's perfect on the... It looks like it was designed by I mean, Apple. If you're regularly using your iPad and forgetting to brush your teeth, that's great. I think this is good. My breakfast pad. Remember, rinsing and drying your brush is a great way to prevent bacteria. Yeah, but to yeah, get the full effect that. of your toothpaste, don't rinse your mouth. Aha! Yes, because it got a little fluoride in there. Mm, I don't keep brushing Do you get a six months checkup? Uh huh. Mm. Actually, for a while, until I got the quip, I was doing four months. Really? And then a couple of times ago, the dad said, Wow, you're doing such a good job. You're coming in every six months now. Um, so, so it saves you money. They come in four different colors. Mm. Like that, I don't know what the colors are called, but um, mm. mine's a rose gold, and that looks like they call they have simple white as well. I'm giving this to all my kids because they don't brush. I know because I was on vacation with my son <laughs> nearly enough. Quip. Get Quip. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash twit. Quip starts at $25 right now when you go to getquip.com slash twit. You get your first refill pack free when you purchase any Quip electric toothbrush. I don't know why you wouldn't rush right now to your iPad and, and go to getquip.com slash twit. This is just brilliant. You know what we do? Because uh, uh, Michael has sleepovers regularly. Mm -hmm. We have a... Extra toothbrush. We have a quip for the kids. Oh. Yeah. And everybody who visits has his own quip. Oh. Because huh. they always forget their toothbrush. Yeah, they forget do. Forget mm -hmm. their toothbrush. Don't you love it? I do. I'm, I'm minty fresh now. Getquip.com slash twit. All right. It's time again. For the parenting corner. <laughs> the parenting corner. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, yesterday, yes. a group of investors put out a letter. <laughs> I thought this was really strange. I thought it was unique. It was something I hadn't heard before. Strange. I thought it was great. Put your money where your um, morals are. I guess morals is kind of a strong word, but uh, <laughs> it, it was think differently about kids and they challenged Apple. They're Apple shareholders. Yeah, they're Apple Activist shareholders. Activist investors, two different groups. One's called Jane. We've heard of them before. Mm -hmm. And the other is the California Teachers Retirement Fund, Calsters. And teachers should care about this. Yes. What did they say? Uh, they said that Apple needed to do better about... Uh, Letting parents control their kids' devices, sort of do better. I mean, basically, one of the things they said, like, the, the devices shouldn't be so appealing to kids because kids 
uh, will use them all the time. And so I don't agree with that, that Apple should make their devices less appealing. But they said that iPhones and children are a toxic pair and Apple needs to get ahead of this. Basically, they said, you know, it's a bottom line issue that this could be turn out like, you know, the tobacco industry. Because, Why did we hand over these yes. iPhones to kids without, you know, doing anything about it? And it would be bad for Apple uh, for their bottom line financially. They're, they're quite reasonably concerned that Apple's going to get sued down the road by parents whose kids have become functional idiots. <laughs> so, you know, we talk about this all the time. Um, I struggle with it every day and I don't, my only, um, my best parent, parental control I have is taking all of their devices and parking them inside our bedroom at night. I saw your charging station. I love <laughs> that. Well, it's a mess. It needs, like I was at, I was shopping at Target. I just want something that fits the five iPads and the five iPhones and I want them to be put away. And you know, you do it in a drawer. Like I think that's maybe what I'm looking yeah. at. Um, Padre and I are gonna do something on know-how. So what I that. did for my dresser is I, uh, you know, just a regular dresser where you have a drawer. Um, most dressers, there's enough clearance behind the drawers that you could run wires up. And if you, so what I did is I put, I drilled holes, not in the back of the dresser, would it be ugly, but in the back of the drawer. Mm -hmm. So that you can run a wire up the back of the dresser into the drawer. And then all the chargers are there. You need a way to lock them down, you know, so that they don't move around. Um, but you don't want to lock them down so that they get pulled. So you mm -hmm. kind of have something I use, I use a little, um, a little one of those, you know what? What do they call those? Those six by six uh, milling examples, the the bricks. I just anyway, I have a little heavy. It's heavy, but not locked down. And I run the wires through that, and then it's sitting in the drawer. So yeah, it's hidden. And do you use it? Is it functional? Yeah, it's totally functional. And that's what you charge in. Well, every I night. do it for two reasons, uh, mostly because it gets them out of the way, but also because of the lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and we all know it. Any light in the bedroom mm -hmm. is probably a bad thing. So. Right. Plus, it tempts me. I see the yeah. I see the blinking, I and I go, away. "I want to see what is that." What okay, is that so notification? but we digress. So I Apple I think, is doing new parental controls, and I think this yeah, is what really today. Jane and Calsters wanted mm -hmm. was Apple consider this and put better parental controls. And in fact, they are. Uh, I don't know if it's in response to this. Yeah, today they put out something that said that they were um, they heard and they're working. So on great. It. Apple has always looked out for kids. And we work hard to create powerful products, blah, 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 lead the industry, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. With today's iOS devices, they pointed out, parents have ability to control, restrict content through apps, movies, websites, songs, and books. But, and they started doing that in 2008, but they plan to do even more. Okay, so, so I think... Here's my brick. Let me show you. Yeah. The best what do they call this? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, but we're, we're having... Someone that? said... Bleep Blurb says you should never put charging batteries inside a non-fireproof container. <laughs> yes. Of course, I have a fireproof safe in my uh, dresser. <laughs> Does anybody do... Yeah, okay. Theoretically, it could burst into flame. Yeah, okay, whatever. I don't do that. <laughs> so... See, if you were Oprah right now and if, you said if that... If you're really paranoid, I guess. Do you? Well, I don't... I was planning on drilling holes in my dresser, but um, now... Well, get a little metal um, box. Okay, metal would be better. Get okay. a little... No, put it in your dresser. You know, like a strong box uh -huh. that you put cash in, a cash box. Drill a hole in that too. <laughs> <laughs> and then put them in there if you're really nervous. Okay, what's that you have in your hand? This, Brass knuckles? I, there's a name for it. Annie Anako told me about these, and I thought they were completely useless until I realized that the lightning cable fits perfectly through one of these holes. And see how heavy this is? It's heavy enough that you put that in your dresser, you trim the cables through there, and that keeps the cables from going away, but it it's not going to tear them out of the socket if, if, if something gets moved around. Oh, I like that. It's called a, mach a machine block or a one, two, three block because it's one... By one, two, three. One, two, three block. Ah. Okay, so I And it's just a beautiful, it's a work of art. That's the main reason I got it, but it turns out it works really well. I'm going to get one of those for my... And it's fireproof. <laughs> St yeah, stay tuned for know-how. Burke and Padre and I are going to build something amazing. Oh, perfect. Thank and you. Burke says, put everything in a bucket of sand. Okay, got it, got it. That's practical. Thanks, Burke. <laughs> I need to check in on what he's actually working on. I probably. think actually... People might cause more explosions because they're putting them in a heat in a heat retaining yeah. thing that's going to heat it up, and 
That's not good. So I don't know what the answer is. You know what? I know what you do. You put it out in your driveway. Charge everything in your driveway with a cement, and uh, and it'll be cool. Mm. And if it bursts into flame, no harm, no foul. Okay, so about the parental controls, I think a good example of what Apple has already done in this vein is the do not disturb while driving. I think that is that's huge. It, it and that's works a new one. great. You can use I it. I do it. You cannot use it. Like you don't have to. It, no one's forcing you to. No, Apple's not forcing you to. And you to can use even it. say, "I'm not driving." Let me. Right. So if exactly. you're if you're in the passenger seat, you can still use your phone. But I turn that on. I love it. It has changed the way because I was definitely a stoplight sneaky texter, yep. and I'm not anymore. And, and one of the things you can have it do, which I do, is send a message out saying, "I'm driving right now." Right. Uh, I can't see your text, but I will respond later. I don't do that. I did that for a while, and then I felt like it was rude. And also, like, people can wait. I don't like this idea of, like, you need... I mean, maybe if you have a job where you need to respond to text messages all the time, but I I don't. Like, I, I, I people can wait to, to hear it, back yeah, from me. I, yeah, I kind of mix... I do have it. Go send that out. You can also just send it to your to certain people or just to your favorites or just to people in your contact. Or people you don't like. Yeah, exactly. You just have it sent to them all, all the, the time. time. Next time you see that, from, next yeah. time I see that from you, I'm going to think, hmm. <laughs> um, so I think that's a very elegant solution to what was a huge problem. I think it's probably saved lives already. Already, um, yeah. And I think that Apple could do something like that with some sort of timing. I've told you guys about different um, services that I've used. Nothing works. I know you have a lot of success with Eero, and I'm working on one of our sponsors, I'm working on that, but I have just like little problems. Like we have um, we have dual band modem and the Eero. And so I can turn off the Eero, but then the kids can see the Sonic modem. And so I know that's a, just a technical thing. Oh, I can help you with that. You yeah. disable the Wi-Fi on the Sonic modem. That's all. They shouldn't, they, you don't want both of them doing that. Right. So you just, so Sonic uh, has its, you know, modem router. Okay. And you just turn off the Wi-Fi on that. That, then they can't see it. There's a bigger problem, though. So, <laughs> They've always got LTE yeah. access. I have really bad <laughs> I don't know cell. how to prevent that. Yeah. I have bad cell service in my um, Good. Bad house. cell service is a very good I know. Good That's thing. what my dad's like. Why don't you switch away from Sprint and get better cell service? No, I'm like, it's, it's fine. I, I don't need it. Um, but I think they can do something. But it is tricky. It is very tricky because it depends on your kid's age. It depends on your kid's behavior. I mean, it, it's there's so many different factors and there's just the idea that nobody wants to, you know, I don't know. Like, and just the bottom line is it's it's a lot easier just to ignore the problem. NTSB says that 6,000 people died last year of distracted driving. Right. But I, I was talking about, um, but kids using it. And using phones. it at night. Yeah. I think, though, there's a little hypocrisy here because they see us yes glued to we, our phone yes. all the time and, and i go ahead but well, i think that our brains are developed that's the difference like if you're talking about an undeveloped brain a kid who yeah. is you know that it's we, we've never seen it we haven't seen what it will do i mean we've seen a little bit the gene I twenty. Think it's going to mold the brain into the future this is what this is how their life is going to be might as well get used to it now they're going to have the immunity built up well, uh, imagine though if a kid never had access to this stuff and then at 18 goes out into the real world, wow, this is awesome and never goes to bed again. I think there's something to be said for uh, we've had this I we used to have this debate at the at the high school mm -hmm. where they block everything. I said, "Don't you, first of all, they can get around it." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're just teaching so. them how to get around it. Second, you're not teaching them how to deal with it. <laughs> Right. Yes, you yes. see? That is that is That was the, exactly their reaction. Well, that is the thing like, you know, my kids are 12 and 14 and I would love for them just, you know, 6 years they'll be out of the house. They'll be on their own. There nobody telling them they get, you know, only an hour and a half of screen time. No one telling them stop playing Minecraft. You got to do your homework. That's going to be over. We've so had this discussion before over alcohol. Yes. And there are there's a school of thought that says, well, in France and Italy, they let the kids drink a little <laughs> diluted wine with dinner, that alcohol is not treated as this secret adult-only ritual. And they claim, and I, you know, I don't know what the real numbers are, and I'm not claiming this. I'm just saying this is what some people say, that there's less alcoholism as a result, that kids are exposed to it at a younger age. They don't think of it as something magical and special and grown up. And as a result, they're less likely to drink heavily as they get older. 
I worry that it might be similar to that with the smartphones, that it becomes the forbidden fruit that then, as soon as they get out of your control, they go crazy with. So I think, it, I always think it's best, if you can, to expose them to stuff and teach them how to use it than it is to just say, no, no, no. I know, fan, uh, there's another example, is candy. I do, I do know a kid who was never allowed anything with sugar, and sugar is poison. We all know that. <laughs> it really is. There's no, there's not any, there's no longer any question that you're giving your kid rat poison. But this kid was never allowed sugar and, of course, ate candy like a demon anytime it was at somebody's house, never learned how to control it. So I think it's in some ways it's better to say, well, okay, you know, there's ice cream in the freezer. Let's teach you how not to eat it every time. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I think there are there are third party services that do that. There's a service called Unglue that I've been trying. Unglue. Unglue. <clears throat> um, and we met him at uh, PepCon. But I think an outside service is not going to be as good as no. It's hard them to learning the internal. Right, but that's what his, he has, he has kids and he really wants, his idea is to have, to teach them. So it's like uh, warnings. It's like, you know, hey, you've been on the, you know, your iPhone for 45 minutes. Like, you know, you're going to have 10 more minutes left. Like that, that sort of thing. Kind of help them. Yeah. Just alert awareness. I need that too. Like yeah. I said, I set timers on my Apple watch. Like, oh, yeah. oh, whoa, you know, and I still have problems. Like I still have spend too much time. Um, this is where the iPhone has a little disadvantage over mm -hmm. Android. I yeah, use a program called Instant that can monitor all the apps, tell you how long you've spent, which apps you spent time with, warn you and things like that mm -hmm. on my Android device. But there isn't really anything quite like that on the iPhone because Apple doesn't let third parties, you know, get the access to that information. I, this is why I taught my kids to smoke when they were eight because I feel like, <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, you, well, you can take it too far, right? I do think that... a that a, alcohol is a good example. Like I do feel like I lock up the kids' devices after 10 p.m. Like I lock the liquor cabinet. You know, it's the same same thing because nothing good happens after 10 p.m. You know, <laughs> online or you know in the liquor cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. That's me, and you do you. You, you do, do you. you. But I mean, there is one way to see how much time you've spent. We've talked about this before in the battery percentage. You can take a look at this. That's useful. Um, so, but it's kind of hidden, and you have to. Yeah, you go to the battery percentage, and you have to click this little clock. So, like, I've spent four point four hours on Twitter. Like, is that healthy? Probably not. Um, <laughs> what? In what time frame? A week? In the last seven days. Oh, good. Four point four hours is a lot, though. It does seem like a lot. Um. You know, and only 38 minutes on Instagram. That's not bad. You you don't see Facebook here because I took it off my phone. Good, and I me feel too. wonderful is, yeah, about it. Isn't that it. great? Oh. So, um, yeah, you can kind of take a look at what you're doing or what your kid's doing and how much time they're spending. I shouldn't mock you until I look at how much time I spend on, <laughs> on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> well, um, so two days. How come you get seven days? I only oh, get two days. Um, and press the clock. Yeah. And then you can see. Did you, are you seeing time? Oh, yeah, yeah you'll see the time. Twitter, five minutes. Oh, on your iPad. <laughs> oh, shh. <laughs> you haven't, you on haven't the, used that iPad since that, last week. It's nay on the iPad A. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of time on Mint looking at my finances. Yeah, look at Facebook. You 30 minutes. Yeah, because I do have Facebook on here. Mm -hmm. But you don't have it on your iPhone. I don't have my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, that's a nice, that's actually a very handy uh, feature, I think. That's, by the way, that's in the settings battery. Do we need to tell people how to get their twenty nine dollar phone replacement? No, just go to your Apple store and do it. Um, you can. You don't have to pass the. You, you, the they don't the test diagnostic it. test. They don't do anything. They just say, okay, fine. But they if you do, have an iPhone six, six S or SE. But then, if you have, if you have gotten a new battery this year, you do have to pass the diagnostic well, test. Well, they know, I guess, if you've got a new battery. Yeah. The other thing, as somebody asked me to mention, is if your phone is in any way damaged, if you have a, even a chip on the screen, they'll make you re play or repair that as well. Oh, really? Yeah. You can't just get the battery and, and ignore the, ch the cracked Why? screen. They make you? Yeah, they say, look, if you want the battery replacement, we're going to have to replace the screen that as well. This doesn't seem fair. The cracked screen is fine. Any crack? Apparently, that's mm. what I was told by somebody who tried. <laughs> iPhone 7, yes, as well. Okay. Not 8, that's too new. <laughs> so I have a few things. I want to show you the Nucleum. <laughs> The Nucleum. The Nucleum. I like this the name. What is, does it do? $80. Yeah. And uh, as you know, I bought Annabella 
the one of the new MacBooks that only has Type C. But and she, we showed that video last week that she did, and she needed to put the SD card in. So it's Type C in, and it's power through, and it's got seven different things. It has uh, the SD card, the micro SD card. It has a USB. That's another Type C, and another USB. And I'm this is. Okay, this is the Type C power. So I think this is a really great. I mean, eighty dollars is not cheap, but if you're getting a, a new MacBook that has a only the Type C, this is a good little dongle, and it's not huge or anything. And um, I like it. Uh, it's not just a breakout box; it's a lot more than that um, because you know the Type C is missing also. Nucleum, you can. Buy, it's from Kingston, and you can buy them. Uh, anywhere. I am I am trying. Yeah, <laughs> How long can I talk? Do you have something like this that you want yeah. to show off? Yeah. How much is that? Because they're uh, complaining it's that it's that the $80 is expensive. I don't think this $80 is, is expensive for eight ports. No, this is more for... Um, Six ports. This is more Seven. like a traditional dock. I like actually like that. And there's a number of companies that make uh, even smaller... I have one in my briefcase, but I've already taken enough of your time going to get this. Um, but <laughs> it plugs into the side... Uh, there but i like this this is called the wedge Ooh. or the stone it's from hinge hinge makes docks so the laptop sits on this which tilts it up which makes it kind of oh, nice. nice same idea uh type c cable plugs into here and then you get three usb ports one of which can be used for charging because it has power see unlike that this has power oh it does you, you power through yeah you can power you through. plug it into the wall um oh no this is plugged into the wall you can power your phone yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got a battery. So what this does is, this does not have a battery. This is like a dock. You get home, you put your laptop on it. This is already plugged in. You attach the Type-C cable. It even has a display port so you can have a uh, Apple monitor hooked up to it, Ethernet. So what the idea is you leave this at home. That you might carry around with you, right? This you leave at home, yeah. and then um, it doesn't have some of the things yours has, though, like the SD card reader. Yeah, the SD card reader for any creatives that want to use the MacBook. Oh, also HDMI. I forgot to mention that, which is useful. Um, it is power. That's through. really so nice. If you put, if you put, if you have your power cord, you could you plug can power it in your there. laptop through that. Yes, yeah. or you can power your iPhone or whatever else you power through. Yeah, so this thing. isn't quite as good because you have to use their proprietary connector. You can't use. You know what? Oh, yeah, maybe you can. I'm sorry, you can. You plug it into the side there. So yeah. I guess presumably. But that's nice to, this was good on vacation. Or just throw it in your. Maybe not, actually. Throw it in your bag. Oh, and it does have an SD card reader. I just couldn't find oh. it. Oh, and micro side. SD? Yeah. No. Yes, SDXC. Oh. Um, let me just quickly look. This is, you know what? <laughs> I saw this in an Instagram ad. <laughs> I see great things in an, in an Instagram ads. Oh, lordy, lordy. HengeDocs.com. Let me get the, uh, they make a variety of docs. This is called the Wedge, I think, or no, the, the Stone. It is a Wedge. And uh, let me just see how much that is. That's 200 bucks. So your Kensington is probably a better a better deal. I like it. Yeah. This connects. I, you know, that's an interesting... So actually, I guess what happens is you plug this in <laughs> to the wall and then this into the laptop and it powers the laptop, but it's not using Apple's uh, charger. The idea is this just would stay on your desk. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I have a little preview for my uh, little spot on the screensavers um, this weekend. Ten cases for the iPhone 10. Here's a little preview of four that I'll be looking at. So I just want to give you a little tease. Watch the new screensavers. Um, this is the pad and quill. That's pretty. Traveler. I like pad and quill stuff. Me too. And yeah. the Nomad, which is leather and plastic. Mm. And then here's the famous Apple Folio case. Oh, you finally got I it. I did. It is uh, it is okay. It has some serious issues. For example, when you fold it back when your phone is in there, um, it muffles one of the antennas, so it's hard to... Plus, you can't take a picture. Uh, yeah, when you fold That's it back. That's why I but, stopped yeah. carrying the the wallet uh, yeah. cases, because mm -hmm. anytime you want to take a picture, you have your wallets flapping <laughs> flapping out in the wind like that. And I eventually that got annoying, so I just went back to, and I'll give you this for your uh, rundown, the simple plastic... Uh, Spigen case that's just really uh, just like a plastic holder. Yeah. And that's as slim and simple as you can get. The other reason I like it is I still want to use wireless charging and a lot of those will block wireless charging mm -hmm. which is kind of annoying. Yeah. 
So tune in to the new screensavers yep. on Saturday. Usually my segments are saved to the end. Saved to the end, not put at the end. Saved. saved. We saved the best for last. For last. Not just stuck in at yeah, the end. I don't know end. why you always seem to be at the end of the show. I don't show. know why either. I'll move you up. <laughs> All right, so we got time for a few questions. Greg had a comment to make. He said, during the show before Christmas, you were discussing chargers for phones. One of the chargers you discussed had a terminal marked Apple and the other Android. And Leo and you suggested this was dumbing it down. Actually, not so. Some Samsung devices won't charge on Apple devices and vice versa. The D plus and D minus connections have pull-up registers to power line the, to, to identify them correctly. My Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 7-inch will only charge very, very slowly on an Apple charger. I think hmm. what you meant was that it was dumbing it down to call it Apple and Android. It was really lightning and USB is what it was. Oh, Okay. Or it was lightning and USB-C. Um, I use, yeah, right. Yeah. So there are different, I mean, things will, usually everything charge, well, I guess your point is. If it's type A USB, was I can't remember what it was, it and was I was a, the one that said it was dumbing it down? Well, because it was, yeah, it was. Was it type A? It was like an anchor um, or, so IQ. It, had a, it was the anchor IQ thing, yeah. and then, or it, was, it wasn't an anchor no, one. No, I, think I, I don't think it was, it was, uh, it, 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 they were all type A's, which means you would take your appropriate cable. So it would, you could use the Apple to charge the Android with the appropriate cable. His point is interesting, but I'm not, so there is, it is the case that uh, many Android devices support a variety of different kinds of quick charging. There's Samsung quick charging and there's Qualcomm quick charging. And Apple doesn't theoretically support that. They have their own sort of quick charging. And I guess, you know, so I'm, I'm going to accept his explanation okay. that there's, they've switched the pins. Um, I always just assumed it was higher amperage. And so I haven't, I haven't even paid any attention. I just, I just use whatever I use. The most of the devices now, like the anchor devices, they say smart charging. Right. And, and they that, just, <laughs> they just use whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. But some will not work on iPhones. Like some, So that's interesting. Just, yeah. So you, so maybe there is a good reason to name it Android. And yeah. IPhone. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Jeff from Tracy, California writes, how do I permanently delete books, movies, and TV shows from my devices and the cloud? There's no, no judgment, Jeff. No, you can totally do that. Can you? Because I thought you couldn't delete your purchase history. Um, no, you, you can can't. You hide it. Yes. I think that's what he wants. Permanently delete books, music, and TV shows from my devices in the cloud. You're well, embarrassed actually, that you bought it. Yeah. Like, so I hide stuff all the time. <laughs> Good to know. But, uh, yeah, Sometimes I guess it's always going to show up some in your purchases. But you can hide it. Yeah, I think I think that's what he wanted. I mean, uh, what were you going to, how were you going to answer? Well, I was going to show him how to hide it. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, because, well, frankly, uh, this happens all the time. It even happens to me on Netflix and stuff where I watch something and go, that was horrible. And I don't want to see it ever again. <laughs> and, you know, like, but I might say, oh, I forgot that was horrible and watch it again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so... So, you know how Netflix will say stuff you recently watched and Apple TV will do that. The Apple uh, TV app on the iPad. It'll, it'll remember stuff you recently watched. And maybe you just, uh, I don't want to, I, I watched it, but I realized what a piece of junk it was. I don't want to see it again. Like Prison Break, season one, episode one. You can see I watched that all of like a minute. Mm -hmm. La La Land. Don't want to watch that again. Star Wars. No, I'll watch that again. Man on the Moon. I'm done with that. This is I'm done with. So maybe some stuff like I'm done with. So you 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 can't hide these uh, so that you don't see them ever again, right? Is mm -hmm. where what was he talking? Which which situation was he talking? He said books, movies, and so if I I press and hold it right, remove from up next, mark episode is watched, clear from play history, but that's not going to clear from your purchase history. Mm. So I, it depends what you mean, but I, you know, like let's clear that from my play history. Now I'm not going to see that, like continue to watch. Or I could say, you know, as I did, I finished Vi Vice Principles. I'm done. So I could just take that. It goes away as a result. So how do you hide stuff? I thought I knew the answer to this question. Well, this is just one app. This is an iTunes. This is the Apple TV app. Are you using iTunes? Mm -hmm. The Apple TV app. Yeah, you just press and or hold. The, yeah, TV app. Yeah, and then I got. See, remove from up next, mark episode as watched. So I don't really use the TV app that much, except you kind of, you kind of, I don't know. Let's see in iTunes, if there's a way to do that in uh, in iTunes. I don't know. 
I think my, my sense is you can hide anything. In Netflix, iTunes, Apple TV, mm -hmm. there's a way to hide it. Mm -hmm. Can you remove it from the list of things you've no, purchased? Probably not. Can. So be careful what you buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you go, why? I'm, I'm so sorry I bought that, and I don't want anybody to know I bought that. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. the room. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> the pro I'll tell you why. Because if you hide it from purchase, you maybe you can never get it again. And like, like what is it if you change your but I bought that. No. See, they don't want you to remove it because right. then you'll complain to them, I can't get it again. Mm -hmm. Well, you removed it. Yeah, but I bought it. I own it. I want it. Well, sorry. Okay, so it's uh Geeking Tom says it's iTunes account, view my account. Purchase history. Yeah. So it's Yeah, but can you delete stuff from your purchase history? But that's how you hide it. Oh, okay. ITunes. Can you delete it? General, let's see. Hide items. I know hiding. Yeah. So be careful what you bought. I mean, I'm assuming you can hide it from if you have like a family account as well. Yeah. Sometimes it's embarrassing that, you know, you bought, you know. No judgment. Jail, jailbreak women. Yeah. You don't have to elaborate. No one needed you to elaborate. You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Girls in chains. You didn't want, you didn't really want anybody to know you watched that. Yes. Or at least tried to. Right. I understand that. So... Speaking of some hiding things, sometimes things are hidden and sometimes they're lost and sometimes you can find them if you've attached did the tracker Did you notice when I took out my dongle? I did notice your dongle. This is another, I didn't really get to this part, but this is, there's another kind of uh, two-factor authentication, which is something you have, but it's something you have as a dongle. I guess I did talk about that. But did, did you notice that what's on my dongle is also my tracker? Because mm. you don't want to lose your dongle, kids. Or your car keys. <laughs> Tracker is how you keep from losing all that stuff that you spend hours every week looking for. 55 minutes a day on average looking for stuff you know you have but you can't find. The tracker is tiny. The new, This is the new tracker Pixel. It is about the size of a dime, weighs less. It's the, it's the lightest weight tracking, uh, Bluetooth tracking device ever. You pair it to the tracker app on your phone and then... T a couple of things can be used. See, so the phone finder, you press the button on your tracker, and it will make a loud noise in your phone, even if it's silenced. Similarly, if you lose your keys, you can uh, press a button on your phone, and your keys will go... Breep, breep. I once lost my keys, I think I mentioned this before, in my shirt. I was, wearing, <laughs> I was wearing one of those Scotty Vest shirts that had a lot of pockets, and I thought, oh, I lost my keys, and I went searching and searching. Finally said, oh, I forgot I had a tracker on them. Pressed the button, and my shirt started making noise. I'm telling you, that was good. That was useful. <laughs> they also, if you turn it on, you can have two-way separation alerts. So if you walk out of the room without your phone, it'll let you, your keys will let you know, and vice versa. I use the word keys, but it's really your tracker, so you can attach it to anything. Luggage, your bicycle, your, your, your purse, your wallet. I put it everywhere. Your remote controls. It is so cool. And the tracker pixel is even cooler because not only will it make noise when you press the button, but it lights up because it has a, uh, by the way, that's a 10, what is that? That's seventy four ninety nine is for a bunch of them, not like five of them. So they're very affordable. I really love the tracker. We're going to make it even more affordable. Right now, go to the tracker.com slash iOS today and you'll save 20% off any order. That's the tracker dot com slash ios today 20 percent off t-h-e-t-r-a-c-k-r the tracker.com slash ios today they also have this crowd locate network which really is amazing see there are more than five million people with trackers and so wherever you go if you lose your keys and somebody with the tracker app walks by the app goes i see leo's keys i see leo's tracker and notifies your app and you can say your keys were just seen in mesopotamia or where <laughs> wherever you lost them or wherever somebody took them. And, of course, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you're guaranteed not to lose. Go to thetracker.com slash iOS today. I love my tracker. Trackers on everything. Every, every literally, because I'm terrible that way. T-H-E-T-R-A-C-K-R.com slash iOS today. Why are you, are you uh, the Hawaiian punch kid? I guess so. I mean, don't I look fabulous? Uh, how would you like a nice Hawaiian punch? And I am Smokey the Bear. <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. Why are we wearing silly hats? Well, I was going to ask you, so you'd have to answer. But uh, <laughs> I will answer. We're wearing caps because this is the app cap segment, the award, the presti prestigious award 
that we hand out. I really like this hat. I, I like should it. wear this more. You should. I, I also like this one. Uh, these you are the prestigious <laughs> awards. It's the very prestigious App Cap Award of the Week. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, my favorite app is called Fabulous. Have you heard of the no, Fabulous well, app? It it's, must be great. It is. It's been on Android for a while, and it just came on iOS, and it's an app uh, to, as Oprah would say, help me live my best life. Which I You're want. You're really to do. trying so hard to live your best life. I am really trying. I've never seen anybody hard. try harder. <laughs> really, I really am. Uh, so this is very simple habits that Fabulous will help you with. The first habit is just wake up in the morning and drink water. You can do that, right? I can do that. Uh, and it will set an alarm for, like, you can set an alarm for the night before to put a bottle of water by your bed, and then an alarm like drink water, and then you can. See, why Why do I need a bottle of water? Um, just by seeing okay. the water bottle is, in, in your everyday environment, you'll be you'll be more prompt. Do you mind if I drive you off the road briefly? Yeah, sure. So, and I, because people at home are doing this, I just searched the app store for uh -huh. Fabulous. Look what I came up with. Not the app you're looking Not for? Not anything called Fabulous. Not anything called Fabulous. Yeah, the app I store. search for Fabulous. Not anything Daddy Long Legs Arcade? Why is that showing up? Fabulous. What is wrong with this? Why yeah. doesn't Apple ever fix this? I don't, know. I don't want Dubai Drift 2 or iReader, your handheld library. I want fabulous. That's why I searched for it. Why is it? And, and I thought it was supposed to get better, too. Well, if you search, fabulous. and this is just to help yeah. you motivate me, yeah, not that's, Fabulous that's Angela. Fabulous. Didn't find that either, by the way. Fabulous. Fabulous motivate, motivate me. me. And then I still get Daddy Maybe Long Legs. Maybe you need a, an iPhone only. Oh, it's only for the iPhone. Yeah, it's only for the iPhone. Oh, so. okay. There's a little. There we there's go. a little tip. It'll probably come right up. Yeah. Did it come right up? Lose there weight hypnosis. Fabulous. Motivate me yeah. and Daddy Long Legs. <laughs> Still, why Daddy Long Legs? Yeah, why? I, don't know. I, I feel like it doesn't even look good. It doesn't even like look like a good game. It looks like a good game to me, but I don't know. I, <laughs> I get distracted. Um, so, so let's get this. I do. I need to make, live my best yes. life. So there's a lot of things that it'll let you do. Read um, how to be motivated. Um, Reset read. your habits in 19 days. Yes. God, I have some. So bad it's free habits. to oh, it's free to download and free to use for a while, and then of course you know you can subscribe get to it and habit. it'll give you more things. <laughs> So you can uh, do a 12-week program that'll cost you some money. But everything that I've been doing so far is free. I have my morning ritual, and I've been doing it on the iPhone mostly, so I'll show that I already, I've already i unlocked the afternoon rituals. So I have five habits to do in the afternoon. I, I breathe, an excellent habit to have, breathing, drink water. I'm going to clean and tidy up, eat more fruits and vegetables, and I'm going to drink some tea. And I have little... Um, evening rituals as well. So I'm if you did all that, would you be a better you? I, I think I would be a better you. Disconnect and unplug. Be grateful. There was a great piece in the New York Times. I, I like don't know if grateful. you read like it, that. but uh, willpower is not going to help you keep your resolution. I saw that. Being grateful and being um, compassionate to yourself and others, that's what's yeah. going to help you. That's why I don't make resolutions. I just go, I am already my best self. <laughs> And I am working on being compassionate towards you every week. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. But search for fabulous dash. Motivate me. Motivate me mm -hmm. if you want to find it. And be fabulous. Whew. If you're being fabulous, tweet at me at Megan Maroney. We can be fabulous together and motivate each other yes. to live our best lives. I love that. You know, it seems to be a gender thing that women are always trying to lead their best lives and men are just trying to... <laughs> Well, I don't know what men are trying to do, but it's not lead their best lives. Keep women from leading their best <laughs> That's lives. Right. Mostly keep you down because you just make us feel bad and look bad because you're leading yes, your best lives. And do. here I am just having another beer. <laughs> um, be glitched, bothered and bewildered. <laughs> So we were talking about security today. I thought it'd be fun to show a game that is a hacking game, especially since Be Glitched is the prettiest hacking, hacking game ever, ever seen. It is a kind of 8-bit, but it's pink, and you are going to become the Glitch Witch. So let's... Oh, I should go back to the beginning, really, if I'm going to do it. Exit network and go start, start at the beginning. Okay. Isn't that fun? It's got the modem. Log out. I love this sound. Okay, so we're going to start at the beginning because I'm kind of, I've started hacking. So we'll be a new user. User 2, Glitch Witch. Computer, be glitched. Log in. 
Fart machine one two three four. Oh, incorrect password detected. Locking file system, flushing toilet threads, operating scrub account. All right, now there is no instruction. There is nothing. You're just going to have to figure out what is going on. I'm going to start by read me. Hello, stranger. If you're reading this, it means you managed to find my laptop in its special hiding spot. Lucky you. Oh, boy. I'm actually a pretty cool computer witch. You know, manipulating the fabric of the modern world to my will. Kind of a big deal. This computer just so happens to contain many of my secrets. Ooh, I like secrets. I just might teach a few of them to you if you do me a favor. The favor is this. I need you to take my place for a while. Oh, this doesn't sound good. Did you see the Santa Claus? Yeah. If you're interested, and I know you are, then you should start by getting familiar with my computer. Head over to FlowerNet. Play around a bit to get your bearings. By the way, the password to FlowerNet is, oh, let's remember this, One Chief Rocker. Raka. One Chief Raka. Good luck, Glitch Witch. <gasps> so uh, here's FlowerNet. Let's let's go in there, .htm. Oh, it pre-filled the password. It looks like I've got a network. What can I do here? So this is one of those games where they don't tell you very much. A little bit. In fact, this is the first game, so they're telling you a little bit about it. And there is a, a help system, but it's really more a hint system. You have to figure out. I don't know what to do. Some things are happening. I don't... You play with it a little bit. Eventually... Hmm... Hmm. Let's try logging in. No. Nope. Yeah, mm. I, I already forgot the password. You should use the password manager. <laughs> you should have had a better password. Rocker or something. I know. Oh, how about logging in here? No. Nope. What about that one? No. Nope. Oh. <gasps> so you're going to go down the well, the rabbit hole of hacking. And I love the colors, the 8-bit look. And actually, there's some pretty challenging puzzles in here. It's, I think, a buck ninety nine. It's not going to take you more than a day or two to get through everything. It's not the most, you know, difficult thing in the world. But it's fun. And I think it's kind of novel in its approach. Uh-oh. You only get three bad bun buns. So let's, <laughs> let's get this right. We're gonna go visit three bad these. bun buns. I don't actually, truthfully, I have no idea what's going on here. You know, I downloaded this game a while ago. I don't believe that I talked about it on the show, but I when I tried to... When you said you were going to choose it, I was like, oh, I already own this. Yeah. But I couldn't get very far in it. Well, ev eventually, if I can get this system solved, I and I frankly don't know. How, I solved it randomly last time. <laughs> uh, I will... Um, uh, uh, I will eventually get into... Uh-oh, I have three bad buns. Let's go. I will get into... Uh, what is kind of like a uh, tet uh, uh, kind of candy crushy game. I mean, there's like there's bejeweled, different right? bejeweled. Yeah, there's different kinds of games. So I'm trying to get the elephant in the room. I do like so, <laughs> so the elephant stands in one place unless discovered. Attacks on cycle over. Now you're trying to blow him up, but the funny thing is he's not hiding. Anyway, there's a, some trash talk and. Let's see. Is he see him anywhere? He's here somewhere. Well, we gotta find him. So you're playing a little bit of a Tetrisy game. You get more energy if you um, put batteries together. What? Green box third. Oh, First. there he is. There he is. So I'm trying to blow him up. So the trick is to get a bomb. See a bomb right here. Oh. Get this bomb right next to him. Three in a row and a bomb. If I can get it on him. There's a bomb sector exactly in my location. I hope she doesn't click it. Oh, oh. <gasps> Gorf. <laughs> Hacker defeated. So you so you played this and you said, I don't like it. Well, I mean, that that's just my... I, I, I like watching it. I, like watching I just think play it's it. kind of interesting colors. and. I do like the colors and the yeah. sounds. Yeah. Um, and I like that you like it. <laughs> so... Anyway, you could be the glitch witch, be hacking. Buck ninety nine won't won't take you forever to finish. Always be hacking. That's what I say. Always be hacking. <laughs> mm. I think if you're gonna play Candy Crush, might as well get something real done. 
Is that what Candy Crush is like, or is that or is sort it? of? Yeah, it's kind of the. I, I don't play those kinds of games because I get a little addicted to them and I and I ignore everyone else. It's kind of fun. Stop. Yeah. So do you see him anywhere? Is the he, elephant. Is he around anywhere? Is that him? No. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, I, speaking of addicted, I believe that I am now addicted. All right. Well, then uh, I'm going to stop enabling you and say <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for joining us, everyone. We record iOS today, every Monday, Tuesday, every Tuesday. When Leo gets here, round about 9, 9.30, yeah. 10, 10 30, about, 11, yep. you know, somewhere in that time frame. We start exactly <laughs> when we start. <laughs> but So you could watch live at YouTube. Uh, I'm sorry, twit.tv slash live or youtube.com slash twit because we're on there and, you know, you stream and Twitch, a lot of places. But uh, if you don't want to wait around for Leo, you have an option Megan does not. <laughs> which is to go to twit.tv slash iOS and download an episode after we record it. Maybe or that, Maybe that's what I'll do next week. I'll yeah, just, you should just download, <laughs> download it later. <laughs> subscribe, and that way you'll get it automatically. You don't even have to think about it. You don't have to wait for anything. It just comes into your, as soon as we're done, it just arrives in your inbox, and you can listen. I think it's a fun show. I, 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 I like doing it. I hope you enjoy uh, watching it. If you have questions or thoughts... All you got to do is email Megan at twit.tv. Uh, I'd love it if people would record. We don't get as many as we want. I know. 30-second uh, video. Start with your first name in the city. You can ask a question, make a comment, make a suggestion, show us something. Keep it short and uh, put it up on YouTube or somewhere like that and email Megan the link and we'll use it. Yeah, that's your challenge this week. Email your questions or comments in a video. Love that. Megan at twit.tv. Thanks for being here. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Megan Maroney. And we'll see you next week on iOS Today.